views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. This show's audio was via a Skype call. The truth is funny. With Colette Steffen, we'll have you thinking outside the box and riding the wave of infinite potential. Join Colette on the Higher Self Network as she provides energetic shifts and consistent results in every area of life, inspiring listeners to shine their brilliance and ensure success. Many people who shift out of limiting beliefs roar with laughter as they recognize the humor of the giant cosmic joke. The truth is funny. Shift happens. Feel instant relief. Stay tuned for more fun and release struggle and suffering. And now, here's your host, Colette Steffen. This is Colette Marie Steffen. Welcome to The Truth is Funny on Transformation Talk Radio. Stay tuned for the next hour and experience the instant relief of using your intuition to solve life's most challenging problems. Shift happens every Wednesday at 8 o'clock a.m. Pacific Time live on the airwaves, and you can find us in the archives at thetruthisfunny.com, transformationtalkradio.com, and transformationradio.fm. So the energetic shifts that are available on this show are also available um, through the Higher Self Network, um, if you're listening to this show later. And we do love to hear from you. If you would like to call in and you have a question for my guest today or you would just like to get an energetic shift and solve a problem, do feel free to call in 1-800-930-2819. I'm really happy to say I've got an amazing show today uh, where you're going to be talking about dreams and understanding mysteries of the night. And so Caleb Matthews um, is... um, Uh, speaks about dreams as a spiritual language communicated to us during the night season. So we spend, most of us typically spend one third of our lives sleeping and dreaming. But are we aware of the limitless value of the messages? So there's keys in these mysteries that can be unlocked, illuminating potential for our waking lives. Caleb Matthews is a spiritual insurgent who will empower you to unravel the mysteries you are seeking answers to from his many years of rich personal experience. He is a hybrid individual who brings peace into high stress environments, offering insight into the mystical world while providing you with the tools to translate what you see in your dreams into your everyday life. And so, Caleb Matthews, are you there? (laughs) I am here, yes. I'm excited. Oh, me too. I'm so happy to have you on the show. Caleb and I met at the Illuminate uh, Psychic Fair. That, That was at the end of January. Um, of this year and I had a reading with you regarding dreams and I was so impressed I'm just so happy to have you on the show and then um, you know Elizabeth Beads who is um, working with the um, promoting and um, creating the Mountain Spirit Festival um, I said I'd be happy to share some of the um, speakers that are are on are in the festival on my radio show really high quality people and so i really really want to thank you for being on the show and it's so nice to be able to connect with you again um what i'd like to do is just kind of um give you a chance to tell us a little bit about yourself and um just let us know what what's going what's going on in your life how did you end up being who you are now and what you're doing that's great. Those are great deep questions, Colette. So once again, uh, thank you so much for having me on the show, Colette, and uh, Transformation uh, Talk Radio. This is a great honor and a privilege. Uh, how did I become a dreamer, and why was it something I was interested in? Well, that's a very, very deep question. I'm going to try and summarize it as quickly as possible, just because I only know we have so much time. But uh, as far as uh, a dreamer is concerned, uh, I started dreaming uh, at the very young age of six years old, vivid dreams and experiences in the night season. Um, I was raised uh, with my two older brothers uh, by my parents um, as a homeschooler. So uh, we did everything in the homeschooling environment. And part of which, uh, back in those days, um, a few decades ago now, uh, my mom had more freedom to be able to bring things into the curriculum. And one of the things that she brought into the curriculum to teach me and my brothers the importance of 
was understanding our dreams and writing them down and treasuring how our higher power or God speaks to us in the night season. So from a very young age, from six years old, uh, I had these vivid experiences where I was like, this is more than just myself because we didn't have television very much. We didn't have video games at all. Um, so there's these things were coming from other places. So you know what I have to say, is, yeah. your mom is a very special woman, um, <laughs> in, you know, to, to accomplish that seriously. Um, like, yeah. uh, the, because what's coming up when you say that is, you know, our subconscious mind is pretty much formed by the time we're six or seven. And so a lot of us, you know, have a lot of, um, psychic ability, intuitive ability, and, um, you know, have a desire for answering these questions that come from so deeply from within. And a lot of the time, by the time we get into the school system, we're kind of, that's rubbed out a little bit, you know, like, oh, you're not supposed to talk about that or, you know, that kind of thing. So I think this is beautiful, you know, that um, you were um, allowed to express yourself in this way from the very beginning. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, because the school system is trying to indoctrinate you with the, the worldly mindset of everything in the intellect, everything in the natural. But the spiritual mindset of coming into this is that we're, we're human beings that ultimately are having a spiritual experience. So our, our spirit should be greater than our natural um, selves just because there's, there's more things, there's greater things out there. So I was, I was raised as a homeschooler. And then from that place, uh, when I turned about 18 or 19, I started traveling the world and going to different places. Um, I went to a um, spiritual institute, an academy down in the United States called Streams Academy International, um, and went through a seven and a half month program of living on the land in a place called New London, New Hampshire, on the East Coast of the United States. And uh, with about 30 other students and we lived in like a monastic setting and walked the land, worked the land. We prayed, uh, we uh, did Lecto Divina, the art of hearing God or a higher power. But ultimately the main thing we did was we delved into the Hebraic method of dream interpretation. Now you might ask what that is. Well, the Hebraic method is based on the, um, the Joseph and the Daniel principles of interpreting visions and dreams through those pictorial, what is this a picture method? So this, these are things that I did, um, went to Stonehenge at uh, the summer solstice, went many times, have gone many times to, I have to ask you, New um, Age when, Festival. Yeah. when, 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 when you were at Stonehenge, what was your experience? I, Stonehenge, I it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Stonehenge, just uh, it was a beautiful collaboration of spiritual pilgrims all coming into one unity and one place of a posture of the heart to hear from ultimately from heaven and from from their higher power and from God. And it was it was a festival of of light, I would call it. Yeah, it was very interesting because I was visiting with Sharan Sirdar, who's an epigeneticist that's been on my show. Uh, I was teaching a seminar out in England and, um, you know, we went out to Stonehenge with her and, and her sister and I, and there was a, it was just the most beautiful experience. We, you know, to, to go with my sisters there, I call them sisters from my, another mother. <laughs> and it was, uh, I, you know, a very, very, like what you just explained, there, there was just, it was raining, it was pouring, it was dark. And, uh, when I went to, um, they came to pick me up. I had my sunglasses on and her husband said, why are you wearing sunglasses? And I said, cause it's going to be sunny when we get there. And he laughed and it was sunny when we got there <laughs> because <laughs> the, the clouds just all kind of went into like a big cloud over top and sat there and the sun shined through. It was really an amazing experience. And yeah, I, I just had to, I just really wanted to know what your experience was there. Cause so many people, when you ask them, they have that same experience. One of just feeling all this love and light. Yeah, no, it definitely was so. Like, uh, it was it was just a, a feeling of everybody's spirit was reaching out for for a hug, and it was a play. It was a safe place, um, and it was a place where people could come together and uplift one another. And it just brought out the best in humanity. I, I felt because people were there for a spiritual purpose, and uh, that was quite special. So, you know, one of the questions I really wanted to ask you because you have one of the most interest I interesting bios. Um, for one thing, you call yourself an insurgent, and so yeah. what, um, that's the rebellion that's not really interested in conflict. In in some ways, is that? <laughs> <laughs> Tell I, I just have to know why would why did you choose the word insurgent? Well, it's very interesting you ask that. I love how you ask that. Um, so that that ties into just my the, the my upbringing and the way that I was brought up was in a very organic 
setting of believing in the Hebraic gate, my higher power, um, ultimately, um, you know, my gate is Jesus. So that's my personal gate, but, uh, the, uh, but in a very non-institutional way, uh, why I call myself an insurgent is because I'm speaking a message that is empowering all cultures, all, um, backgrounds of spirituality in a way where I can offer my message. And how, when I teach and when I talk about dreams to people in a way where, there is no boundaries for me. I'm going into any place possible. And my main goal is not only to empower the everyday person, but it's also to challenge people who think that they hold the keys for themselves and they can't share with other people. So an insurgent would be somebody who is standing against kind of the, uh, the established authority, so to speak. So the institutional mindset of, okay, well, we're the only ones who have the answers and we're the ones that know about, uh, dreams or we're the ones that know about how, how God speaks. Well, no, uh, everybody has the kingdom of God within us. Uh, the kingdom of heaven is within us. So as an insurgent, I like going into different uh, non-conventional settings like Stonehenge, like um, Haunted Happenings, like uh, Nosara, um, like the Mountain Spirit Festival, and going to those places and speaking about this language of dreams and how the DNA of dreams is within us, and then ultimately doing it in a way where I'm talking in parables and metaphors, but I'm going in there and challenging the, uh, the status quo or the guru or the, the, the two or three people have all the answers. So I'm not sure if that answers my, your question, but it's <laughs> ultimately it's, a, it's empowering the everyday person and it's standing against the established quo of ultimately hierarchical religion. Yeah, I also, you know, there was another thing in your bio that um, I have to ask you about, that you said you're a hybrid individual. What does that mean? Hybrid individual, so uh, combining um, many different um, gifts, because ultimately um, people think as a dream interpreter, it's like, okay, well, is dream interpretation the, uh, the only thing that, uh, that you can do? Well, I'm like, well, obviously that is the main thing, but a hybrid individual, there are other areas that um, I'm able to reach into people as well. So, you know, spiritual readings or, or reading people's spirit and telling them about the, the DNA of just their calling and their destiny within them, um, offering healing as well too through unconventional means uh, like giving people hugs and just having people's stress lift off their shoulders just different uh, different hybrid means because I don't like being put into one box and saying oh he's just the dream interpreter or he's just the guy who reads people or he's just the healer right like it's a Absolutely. it's a combination Absolutely. Um, Caleb, I would say yeah. you are definitely have achieved that. You're not just anything. <laughs> <laughs> you are listening to The Truth is Funny on Transformation Talk Radio with Colette Marie Stephan. And my guest today is Caleb Matthews. And when we return, we'll talk some more about his story. And uh, if you have a dream or you just had a dream and you really, really would love to find out um, Caleb's perspective on it, you can call in 1-800-930-2819 or if you just want to have something shifted, you're also welcome to call in. Uh, we'll be right back to make some shift happen. Stay juicy. Tune in to Your Juicy Love with me, Una Drake, co-hosting monthly with Dr. Pat. And every second Monday at 12 p.m. on Transformation Talk Radio. My show, Your Juicy Love, helps you find the dynamic, life-affirming love you've always wanted. Transform your relationships and bring peace, joy, and juicy, juicy love to planet Earth. For more information, visit unadrake.com. The Janice Underwood Show, helping you create the life you want, not the life you tolerate. Tune in each Monday, 9 a.m. Pacific on Transformation Talk Radio as Janice delves into the life creator system and the next step in your spiritual evolution. Janice Underwood is gifted at helping spiritually minded people shift their mindsets to unleash the creator within. Our souls wish to wake us up. Those of us listening hear the call. Do you? For more information, visit JaniceUnderwood.com. Practice living in wholeness with the body. Tune up. Six classes for $89 designed for radical self-healing and self-regeneration. Heal the deepest root of any challenge. The mental body was programmed in negativity, not good enough, separate from source. You're too much, you'll never make it. The emotional body holds all the pain and trauma of emotional suppression, all the pain from this life and life's past. 
The spiritual body is the place you connect with your higher power, your higher self, with the image and likeness of the one. The physical body houses and expresses the other three bodies every day. Go to CorneliaStephanie.com. Evolve, become a practitioner. We need to heal, integrate, and bring into wholeness and harmony the physical body, addressing all the other bodies in order to live in our true, authentic nature. Take your own journey with the angels with Claire Candy Huff's Heaven Sent Guided Angel Meditation CD. Letting go of concerns and living in the now. This beautiful CD walks listeners through practical exercises to help free them from the burdens, worries, and concerns of daily life. Walking a quarter of the way across the bridge, you see a bright emerald green light and sense a loving presence. This is Archangel Raphael's green healing energies, nourishing and revitalizing you. Take a moment now to bathe in this green healing light. Giving you much more than just relaxation and stress release, this wonderfully narrated CD provides vivid visualization, soothing and inspiring music, and an angel's choir that will bring you peace, clarity, and a newfound awareness. Visit angelhealinghouse.com today. We're back on The Truth is Funny with Colette Marie Stephan and my guest today, Caleb Matthews. Um, before we continue, Caleb, can you just share your contact information with everyone in case they want to reach you? Absolutely, yeah. So, um, Encompassed by Dreams is the name of uh, my dream consulting business. Uh, my main website is www.encompassedbydreams.com. So, E N C O M P A S S E D, and then bydreams.com. Uh, or you can email me at info at encompassedbydreams.com or follow me on Facebook, which is Encompassed by Dreams, or Instagram, Encompassed by Dreams. So, there you have it, all of the uh, the main uh, points of contact. I'm local to Kelowna, British Columbia, so you can find me at the Holistic Fairs or at the uh, my monthly uh, Summer Hill Winery where I do the Dream Chat meetings once a month and as well this summer at the Mountain Spirit Festival with your host, Colette. I will be there from uh, June 23rd to 24th for the two and, days and, of that and festival. Caleb, do you know, um, uh, um, I really wanted to let people know about this festival. Do you know um, yes. the, what times and what days you're speaking? Absolutely. Yes, I do. Uh, do you want so to share that with us? I for sure do, yes. Uh, so my first slot to be speaking um, is going to be Saturday evening, uh, June the 23rd, uh, starting at 7 o'clock. It's at a VIP dinner, actually. So there's only a certain amount of tickets for the dinner because the dinner is like a special kind of celebration event uh, that they're doing for like uh, raising awareness for the entire um, weekend. So they're called the Soul Talks. So uh, they're little bite-sized TED Talk um, length uh, sessions. Uh, so I'll be one of uh, six or seven speakers and I'll be talking about stewarding your dreams. So it's going to be a, a spirit soul talk uh, on Saturday, June 23rd at 7 p.m. Um, at the Mountain Spirit Festival at Sun Peaks. Uh, during the day, I'll actually be, uh, my table, my vendor table will be outside at the main square below the clock tower um, doing dream interpretation and spiritual readings outside from 9 a.m. all the way until 3.30 in the afternoon both days, both Saturday and Sunday. Um, Sunday, I'll be stepping out of the booth uh, to do my workshop from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. on Sunday, June 24th. And I'll be talking about dreamscaping. So getting up and seeing the bigger picture and the landscape of our dreams, how to understand them, and ultimately how to plant a lifestyle of dreaming. That sounds amazing. And I'll just put in, um, let everybody know, I'm also going to be speaking out there. Um, I already had a previous commitment at the Holistic Fair on the Sunday so I'm just going to be able to get there on Saturday from 3.30 to 4.30. Um, I'll be in the Alpine Room at the Grand Hotel. And I will be talking about my workshop, 
will be be irresistible, <laughs> attract um, your authentic desires like bees to a blossom. <laughs> nice. And so, yeah, um, so, um, you know, I'm really looking forward to that. That's out at the Sun Peaks Resort. You can find the information regarding the, the Mountain Spirit Festival. You can find that on Facebook. Um, there's a Mountain Spirit Festival page there. I'm sure it's on Instagram and Twitter and all the other ones also. So, you know, um, before the break, we were talking about dreams and dream um, and dream languaging. I just wanted to um, um, ask you, like, what, what do you feel is that, why do you feel dreams are so important for people? That's a great question. Um, well, to go off your, the first point that uh, you made, Colette, when we opened the show, uh, we spend a third of our lives dreaming. So that's a long, long time. <laughs> so by the time that each person who's um, listening to this, whether you've reached there or not, uh, by the time we all reach 60 years of age, we'll slept 20 years of our lives. So there's a whole lot going on there um, in the night season that is um, that is going on in our spirits that uh, we have to see what's what's happening with that as a picture of why is it important? Well, our dreams are ways that our higher power, the spirit speaks to us when our mind is at rest. Cause during the daytime, our minds are moving at a hundred miles an hour and it's hard to get into a place of uh, peace and meditation and relaxation. But the nighttime scientifically is a time that's proven where our minds are the most at rest and therefore it opens ourselves up to be able to uh, be an antenna to receive those messages coming from coming from our higher power, coming through the dreams and uh, going through that doorway. Uh, so it's just about uh, entering in and, and creating uh, an environment uh, for those dreams to come forward and really just working at it. No different than like a diet or like uh, going to the gym. Like it's uh, this is no different than with dreams. It's uh, we create our atmosphere every day and we create the measure of the degree that we're going to reach by the measure of desire and hunger that we have in our hearts. Because um, I, I just had a question for you regarding this, because I know most people generally sleep on average between six to 10 hours a day. Yeah. And uh, for myself, that's, you know, I, I sleep on average and have been this way for about mm, 15 years, um, maybe four hours a day. And yeah. every once in a while, I'll get getting tired and I'll sleep more. But I find that if I sleep more than four hours at a time, um, I wake up quite often. I'm energetically correcting the world. This <laughs> I'm correcting so many things. Um, I've, yeah. I've started, you know, like uh, so. I find that one of my busiest times is when I'm sleeping, and and it's pro yeah. it's because I've been doing so much energy work. I've kind of gone on at uh, uh, on an automatic, but it's yeah. really interesting because they say you have to um, get into a certain REM to be able yeah. to properly dream. And I just wanted to ask you about that because I definitely am, um, you know, like I remember my dreams. I've I've done some work on remote viewing, on um, on lucid dreaming, et cetera. And I'm just curious as to um, why is it some people remember their dreams and some people don't? It's a very, very good question. You, you've hit on the uh, the jackpot question that I get at every holistic fair, every <laughs> speaking seminar, and everywhere I go, people are like, well, you know, I haven't dreamed in years or I just don't remember my dreams or I know I'm dreaming. And I just can't remember them. This is probably nine out of 10 people give me this, this, um, this thing that you just asked me here in this, this statement. So um, why? Well, that's a very, very deep question. Um, I would say there's multiple reasons why. Um, the first thing that I would engage with is to see ultimately um, how much time someone's getting for sleep or what's happening before you go to sleep as well too. Mm. Um, one, of the, one of the things that really is a key differentiator in our culture, which has really changed the way that people sleep or don't sleep is the electronics. Um, we're, we're dealing with electronics right now, but uh, ultimately I found that um, for many years I wasn't getting into deep, deep sleep, even though I was dreaming, but only in the last couple of years um, where I've removed a lot of the electronics from my physical sleeping space have I found that the, um, the actual static has been released from the air and I've actually been able to fall into sleep. And that's an answer for most people, I think, is that the, uh, especially if you're on your smartphone or on your laptop or you're like the last thing you're doing before you close your eyes is on your electronics, it's going to mess up with your, with your frequency and with ultimately your, uh, your REM sleep. Um, so I would say the first thing that I would identify is, okay, so how much are you on your electronics before you go to sleep? 
that would be a good place to start. Um, Absolutely. I, I, you know, and not just that, but I, a lot of people um, that have TVs in their homes have a tendency to leave them on for background noise. What do you feel about that? (laughs) How does that affect your dreams? It does. It does. You're hitting into, oh my gosh, I love it. Uh, You're hitting into just this this area where uh, ultimately the principle that I teach everywhere I go uh, through the, you know, the Hebraic method. But one thing that I talk about to my audience is the eye is the lamp of the body. So ultimately what we behold, we become. So whether we look at an image or whether we listen to something that's going on, we're taking in the energy of what that picture is portraying and we're translating it into it. We're receiving it into our spirit and our spirit is playing it like a dish. So the way I like to look at that is, for example, if I, go and see like some horror flick or some movie like and then I go to sleep that night and I dream of like all this crazy like um, you know dark creatures are attacking me or just my sleep feels disrupted and I feel like someone's been shaking me all night and I can't fall into deep sleep it's probably me it's probably me going putting that image in front of me is what contributed to a lot of that uh, disruption so I would say that background noise and images and what we put in our senses and our eye gate this is 101, what I teach to my audience when I'm talking with, with, our, with our audience is, what are we feeding on? Because that's going to that's gonna show up in our nightlife. Absolutely. And, and this is something that, you know, we have the subconscious mind that is formed by the time we're seven years old. And that is actually 95% of the time what most people use in their day-to-day lives. That's what, hap- what, what they um, fall, up, like, fall back on when they get triggered. And so yeah. our unconscious mind is our deep spiritual thoughts and the subconscious and unconscious mind are wide awake um, and busy while the conscious mind is sleeping while we're dreaming or while we're yeah. sleeping. And so those two minds, what I f- find for myself is I like to, before I fall asleep, put some tension into my body instead of relaxing it so that all yeah. of the organs are all happy <laughs> and they're all make sure all the <laughs> systems are working really, really quickly and that yeah. everything is structurally sound. And then I like to think of at least three things that happened during the day that were just, you know, amazing things and put my subconscious and unconscious mind in the search for fun, delightful, beautiful experiences. And I find that when I do that, I have a tendency to have dreams that are more enlightening than if I'm focusing on my bills and my emails and my business and so that's (laughs) and so we'll talk about that a little bit more when we come back we um, we need to take another short break here this is colette marie stefan and you are listening to the truth is funny on transformation talk radio you can find me at um www.thetruthisfunny.com tales t-a-i-l-s from the vector.com if you're looking for energy correcting cards and paintings and you can also find me on facebook twitter etc at the truth is funny with colette we'll be right back to take your calls if you want to um if you have a dream and you want to know now's the time 1-800-930-2 Did you know that all of the shows on the Transformation Radio Network are available as podcasts to stream or download? Really? Check us out. Go to TransformationRadio.fm. We have business shows, spiritual shows, energy healing shows, and pretty much everything in between. Something for everyone guaranteed to inspire, educate, and transform. We are transforming the world one listener at a time. This is Debbie Pokornik with a break-free parenting tip. Parenting will always be a bit of a mystery. Who knows why some parenting ideas work and others do not? Or why some kids seem to succeed despite family setbacks, while others have so much given to them and yet fail to thrive. The one thing we do know is that once you have a child, you'll never be quite the same again. Awe-inspiring emotions like overwhelming love, extreme guilt, intense frustration, and incredible joy make this job second to none. Breaking free of parenting pressures means recognizing the pieces that make us unique, the pieces that we carry with us from the past, and the pieces that are influenced by the society we live in. 
when we can pick and choose which pieces we want to keep around and change the others to align with our inner wisdom, we will feel more self-assured in our role as a parent. For information and to work with Debbie, visit EmpoweringNRG.com. Hi, this is Laura Richer, host of On The Verge Radio. Sometimes you hear encouraging messages like transform your life now, become empowered, create the life you crave, and it all seems overwhelming and you're not sure where to start. I'm here to tell you that self-improvement is not always fun and easy, but it is always worth it. The path to creating positive changes begins with releasing the things that have been holding you back. Then you can create a life that inspires you. I know this because I've done it. You can find out more about what I do by visiting my website, seattlehealinghypnosis.com. I look forward to supporting you on your journey. Introducing the Lucid Planet, a digital gathering place featuring cutting-edge, high-vibrational content that will empower and inspire you to become the greatest version of yourself. Visit the Lucid Planet today to stimulate your mind, body, and soul as you connect with a global community of like-minded people. The Lucid Planet is edited by renowned psychologist and author Dr. Kelly Neff, who is here to help you cope with anxiety, connect to your higher purpose, uncover your true passions, and live your dreams. Dr. Kelly's fresh, compassionate perspective emphasizes growth, transformation, healing, and thriving, even in the face of adversity. Say goodbye to bad news and low vibrational media for good and become part of the larger collective of people working together to navigate the global shift of consciousness and transform the world from within. Join the planet, the Lucid Planet. Visit thelucidplanet.com. Welcome home. We're back on The Truth is Funny with Colette Marie Stephan, and I have Caleb Matthews here with me today, and we are talking about dreams. Um, Caleb, we do have uh, a couple of callers, and so I'm going to take the first caller and see. let's see what you do in action. <laughs> Carter, do you have the first caller? <laughs> I just want people to really experience what you do, because I really sure. enjoyed my reading with you. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Will, are you there? I am. And so what How what, are you what would today? you <laughs> What would you like to ask Caleb? Well, I often don't remember my dreams. And when I do, I only ever get a glimpse. Like I know what I was feeling and maybe maybe a little bit of the senses coming in at that moment, but that's the only memory I have. And um lately, I've been doing a lot of software development and I'm dreaming about my work, and I've always dreamt about my work. What's up with that? Sure. Great question. I love it. I absolutely love it. Do you want me to take this from here, Colette, or do you want to Absolutely. Start? You go for it. <laughs> okay. So This is, um, a, this wanna... is your floor. <laughs> go for it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So um, uh, I would say there, um, from the first, um, the first stage there, what was your first name again? Will, right? Yep. Your first, your first name is Will, yes. So, Will, I would say that um, with your sensation that you felt, um, I would go off of, that's a really good entry point into, into your dreams, right? Even if it's only like a flicker or like a glimmer. Uh, sometimes a lot of folks, they come to me and they say, oh, well, you know, I didn't have a long dream. I just only had a short glimmer and a glimpse. But, uh, unless I have these long dreams and they can't really mean much more than, uh, you know, like if they're just short, they don't have much means. And I say, no, really, no, it's a, it's exciting because I find that the, the simple things are, are profound. So this glimmer that you're seeing and that you're feeling and the sensation of starting to dream, I would, I would move off of that point, uh, like me and Colette were talking before the break, of uh, when you go before you go to sleep, of just asking your higher power, asking uh, God or whatever, uh, that glimmer, that sensation that I felt, um, I want to enter in beyond that. And then just to begin to invite, um, you know, the spirit, higher power, to enlighten your senses, to, uh, to, to expound on that sensation. And because that's a perfect entry point. It's your invitation to be able to, to dig deeper beneath the surface. As far as why you're dreaming of your work, um, that could be because um, the one option is, is that you're really, obviously, really invested into it. So you're taking that busyness home with you into your spirit, and then you're dreaming of that. Uh, the other option is is that you could be dreaming of your work because you could be seeing dreams of uh, equations or formulas or answers to some of the questions you've been you've been pondering because that's very uh, very common as well too for uh, for people to dream about answers to uh, 
for their business and their job. So I would, I would expound on that sensation and that invitation that you got and ask your higher power uh, to expound on that because that's an invitation. What I've noticed, Caleb, I, I if I agree on, oh, and, sorry, I didn't mean to, sorry, I just I wanted to, to ask, I just wanted to ask if someone is like, you know, when you first wake up from a dream, Yes. Uh, I, like if you have a paper and a pen and you write it down right away before you do anything else, does that empower people? Like if, if yes. they were looking yes. up a formula or like if they have a math equation in their head, you don't want to lose it, right? <laughs> That's right. Yeah, you, you touched on a great point. I, I, I want to touch on this today, too. So um, so writing it down is of the, the utmost, utmost importance, because if you wake up in the morning, you have an equation like Will has from a dream or you have something that's going on and you think, oh, I'll just make coffee or I'll go have a shower in the morning and I'll remember it later. It's probably going to disappear within probably five to ten minutes. <laughs> that's uh, usually the window of where it disappears, where writing it down not only empowers you, but it actually empowers parts of your left side of your brain for recall, um, to actually recall even what's behind those first things that you started to write. So it's, it's the utmost importance that every single person who's listening right now, and myself included, Colette, um, <laughs> keeping a journal next to our, our beds and write down those things when you wake up, even if it's the middle of the night. It may be, oh man, I'm so tired at three in the morning, but those are the times where the rubber hits the road. I love that. And so a picture will do too, like a doodle. Yes, a doodle will work as well. Yeah. 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 So Will, um, what did you feel about all this? Like, well, You've really hit on something there with the getting answers part, because I definitely solve most of my problems in my sleep. And that kind of gets to my next question, which might be a little bit more for Colette. How do I get paid for the sleep work that I'm doing? Because seriously, <laughs> this is where the most profound solutions are coming from. I'm doing all of my best work when I'm asleep. You know, um, I, I, feel, <laughs> I feel that when people are doing their best work when they're asleep, that that work comes from the heart. That's your purpose. And this was what's so interesting. You know, I, I forgot to pick a card from my Tales from the Vector for today's show. But, of course, that card was the devotion card. And I just laughed because, you know, this is the purpose card. And when I was at the Illuminate um, Psychic Fair, um, Caleb walked over from his table. He was at the booth across from me, walked over to the, you know, the, the, hunt, you know, the, the cards on the table directly went to that one, handed it to me and said, you know, I don't think you're, you, 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 this is just about to start taking off now. Your business is really going to take a, a, a swift change here. <laughs> I laughed because um, it was the purpose card, which is, um, you know, um, your purpose is to be the best version of yourself. So if this, mm. if this information is coming in through your heart, and from your heart, um, what I suggest to people is to recognize that when you make an investment in your time or energy, and you put a lot of uh, um, your time and energy into something, and it's coming from your authentic desires that come from your heart, and you plug into that bi biocomputer so that you can allow your central nervous system, your brain, to um, convert with that, to co be coherent with your heart, what happens is it's so such a joyful thing to get into that work. You know, I quite often um, wake up um, working on different people. People quite often will tell me that they're that that they that I have come to visit them in their dreams. That I talk to them. I give them you know I give them advice. Quite often, people will see the dragons they have for years and years and years. Um, you know, and I wasn't even talking about the dragons then. So you know. I feel the best way to um, recognize the payment or appreciation for um, the work you're doing when you're working at night is to recognize that it's like a wave that you're putting out there and really you're in your authentic desires at that time. And so if I get really tired and I feel like I've been working way too much at night and not getting paid for it and I'm too tired to work during the day, I just put a closed for business sign on my forehead <laughs> and um, allow myself to have my dreams uh, be about my own self. Uh, when I was a server, I would have dreams about, you know, you know um, waiting on tables and my, I would wake up in the morning and my feet would still be hurting. And so that... You know, if it's painful when you wake up, 
that's one thing. If it's if you wake up and you just can't wait to get on with your day because you found some more answers to the problems that you're you know that you're working on, and you're in your heart, it's 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 just so much fun. Why wouldn't you do it? <laughs> that's <laughs> how, right. <laughs> how do you feel about that, Will? <laughs> I'm definitely in my heart. I would say this is the job I cannot not do. I am called to this. I am driven to do this. I have been given all the tools piece by piece to accomplish the task at hand. So uh, I'm on board. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. And th thank you for calling in. You know, and you know, Thanks, this well. is. Yeah, like Caleb, this is so, so brilliant. You know, um, we have a couple minutes before the next break, so we could um, take the next caller and just find out what he'd like to talk about. Or I feel like it might be better for you to just add a little bit more to what you told Will and we'll take the next caller after the next break. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah. So just uh, the part going after the invitation. So expounding on what I was talking about with Will. Um, Ultimately, it's a posture of the heart, and this is everything that I'm talking about today in regards to building a lifestyle of dreaming. It's everything Colette was just talking about there. The heart posture is really the, the place where you know it distinguishes uh, the difference between being entrusted with dreams and not being entrusted with dreams. And so when people come to me at these holistic fairs and these conventions and these events or they ask questions on a radio show like today of uh, how I can accelerate my dreams, it really begins with the heart and it really begins with preparation. So leaving a paper and a pen next to your bed, going to bed early, turning off electronics, uh, building a place and a time for your communion with uh, with your with your spirit, but also with your higher power. Uh, it's a time investment. So I would say that's how the, the the journey can begin to develop a journey in the night season. You know, as I said, I've been doing this since I was six years old, and I've been interpreting dreams since I was 18. So it's definitely a process. It doesn't happen overnight, but it's something that all of us are called to. We are all dreamers. We all have the DNA of dreaming within us. Because here's the truth for us. I'll leave you off with as we transition to Colette and our, our next thing here is. All of us are the manifestation of a dream that our parents had together to have us. So we are walking manifestation. We are the fulfillment of a dream and we are all dreamers. Oh, that is so beautiful how you just put that. It's just so beautiful because, um, you know, when I was in ayahuasca ceremony, I was told that there is no such thing as an accidental child, that all children are conceived by God. Um, yeah. and loved by God. And so um, people co-create children with God. <laughs> and um, so the conception is only um, possible through the higher, what, what I call God, what other people may call um, source energy. You know, that, yeah. is, that is a co-collaboration between the parents and between the soul that wants to come through the child. I just love how you right. put it. That was just so beautiful. We're all dreamers and we're all following our parents' dreams in some ways to bring us through. Um, I yeah. just love that. That's so beautiful. This is Colette Marie Stefan. You're listening to The Truth is Funny. We'll be right back after this short break. Tune in to the hit show, Raging Skillet Radio, mouthing off with Chef Rossi. Chef Rossi mouths off about different subjects in pursuit of breaking down walls and opening up your minds. She and Dr. Pat banter back and forth, taking from the headlines of the day on subjects that reach beyond what goes on in the world into your hearts. And go to theragingskillet.com to find out more and let Chef Rossi know what's on your mind. How would you like increased health and vitality? How would you like to avoid the onset of disease as well as slow the aging process? This is all possible through a simple, safe, and natural process. Every day we are either moving toward wellness or away from wellness. Hi, I'm Mary Jane Mack. I'd like to be your partner in achieving optimal health. Contact me now at MaryJaneMack.com or call 425-392-0659. Visit MaryJaneMack.com. Defining success and putting minds to work. With the Higher Learners Career and Leadership Series, Rudy Racine will help you craft your personal definition of success, offering support and guidance as you move forward towards your goals. Take the leap. With the right mix of focus and motivation, anything can be achieved. 
Tune in every first and third Monday at 12 p.m. Pacific, 3 Eastern. And for more information on Rudy Racine and Higher Learners, visit Rudy's site at higherlearners.com. That's H-I-R-E learners.com. Tune in to The Jen Royster Show, intuitive guidance to inspire your life, each Thursday at 8 a.m. Pacific and 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This amazing show is an inspirational hour that will take you on an epic metaphysical journey to discover the spiritual approach to life's greatest challenges. Dr. Jen is an internationally known intuitive counselor, spiritual teacher, and energy healer. Call in for intuitive readings and visit JenRoyster.com for more information. Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show, talk radio to thrive by. I am so thrilled to be talking to all of you. We have got talk radio for all of us. Are you ready and willing and able to accept all of the abundance you can muster up in your life? Check us out at drpatshow.com, transformationtalkradio.com, transformationradio.fm. Oh, my goodness. This is Colette Marie Steffen. You're listening to The Truth is Funny on Transformation Talk Radio. I have Caleb Matthews here with me today, and we are talking about dreams. Um, before we continue with that, I just want to remind people that there will be a holistic fair this coming um, on the 27th, and I will be there on the 27th of May at the uh, Laurel Packard Building from 11 till 4, and um, that's Carly Penfold was on the show um, with me last time I was on, and so she's been running this, and it's it's a real cool event. It's free to get in, and also I will be holding a live talk event, um, Shift Happens Live Talk event. It's free also, 7 o'clock to 9 o'clock on this coming June 1st uh, from 7 o'clock to 9 o'clock at the Holiday Inn Express in Kelowna. Everybody welcome. It's free, as I said. I give a short talk about what I do, and then I pull people out of the audience that would like to feel the shift. So, Caleb, we were talking about, um, you know, um, the interpretation of dreams and that, and what w- when Will was sharing um, his experience, I was picking up some energy coming in from a lot of people that uh, the reason, the number one weakness for not um, remembering their dreams or not wanting to follow up on their dreams is a fear that what if they dream something bad and it comes true? My mom was terrified of this because she was very psychic. She'd have a dream, um, someone died, and then they would. Mm-hmm. And so she just decided she wasn't going to have anything to do with that anymore. <laughs> yeah. Can you tell us For about sure. that? I definitely can. So I like to um, use an example in a picture, since we're talking about dreams, to answer your question about blockades and uh, fears and uh, fears of going into the dreams that people have. I liken it to many faucets and many taps. So if you've got, uh, you've got like a faucet that uh, produces fresh water, and then you have a faucet that produces dirty water. Um, but if you decide that you're not going to go through either tap, then you're not going to be able to take part of what the good, um, the good flow is. Uh, you'll turn off the bad flow, but you also turn off the good flow. It's the same way with our, uh, with our dream lives. Um, there's ultimately three, um, three sources where our dreams come from. They can come from ourselves. We talked about that earlier, a little bit earlier today. Like if we, watch a movie or something and then we dream about it, it's probably us and not like God or, you know, like the energy of like darkness or whatever. And then there are, is dark energy. Um, it definitely exists, but then there's also energy from our higher power and from light and from God and from the spirit of life and uh, just it, the creator. So what I would encourage dreamers is to not turn off the faucet completely. And what do I mean by that? Well, I would say that before we go to sleep, uh, a great exercise to do is to talk to your higher power and present these, these things. Like if, if you're somebody that had or has had, had nightmares throughout your whole life and you're terrified and you just don't want to go to sleep because you think that's going to show up, then something that you can do is present those things to your higher power and say, you know what? I don't want to be terrified during the night season. And I just, I invite you to enlighten my senses um, just with uh, the dreams of light and of, of positive hope and also of purpose and the stuff that I'm not supposed to see. And that is an attack on my spirit. I just 
close those gates. And so it's all about that collaborating with with God that we were talking about before in in my example of being uh, being God's dream, right? Like being a fulfillment of our parents' dream. We're collaboring with our higher power. So. In answer to your question, Colette, I would say that we're co-laboring with God to keep the positive tap on, but to resist the uh, the dark tap and to turn that off and just say, I refuse it, because you have the authority to accept what goes in and comes out of your senses. I love that. And for those of you who are really doing a lot of energy work and find yourself working a lot at night or like, like in any job, um, when you really are in your heart you know, just, um, you can turn the tap down to a slow drip too. <laughs> like you don't have to have it on full force. Okay. We do have a, this other caller. So I really would like to get him on. Um, Carter, do we have a uh, role here? Roll, you're on the air. Hello. Hello. Hi, Colette. Hi, Roll. How are you today? I'm doing incredibly well. I'm doing awesome. <laughs> I, awesome. decision, I, wanna, I I couldn't wait until our the next session I'm going to schedule with you, so that's why I called in. So I need some strengthening about a decision that I made a couple of days ago. Okay, and so um, when you get it, what, what is what is the decision you made? I'm selling my house. Ah, okay. So you know when you get in touch with that on a scale of 0 to 10 10 being like oh i'm all for it and 0 being or i'm i'm totally freaked out by selling my house and 0 being i'm totally neutral to it um where are you on that scale 8 to 9 i feel pretty strong okay so you're um i'm going to um work on that have you had any interesting dreams lately um I had a dream with a, a teacher that I will that I could follow that does intimacy work, but uh, I I don't necessarily have like very strong dreams. Uh, okay, so I, the uh, dream the dream that the dream that you had with the teacher. Um, do you want to yeah. tell Caleb about that, and I'll work on the back end of this. <laughs> Okay, yeah, yeah. The dream All I right. had is with this um, the sexual in, in intimacy teacher who does also men's work, and he was traveling. Uh, I saw a picture of him and his family traveling to Japan, and that's, uh, I just saw them together. So I thought it was interesting, but it's not, um, I mean, it, it's the same picture that I saw on Facebook earlier. Yeah, so Caleb, um, this is what you're talking about when you get a glimpse of heaven, right? Yeah. So do you want to give some, Rawl, some advice regarding this? Sure, yeah, absolutely. So with, with dreams, um, we have different layers of dreams. There are many different layers of interpretation. Um, so my first question that I ask myself when I'm interpreting a dream with, you know, silently within my heart, but also I uh, propose to the audience when you're uh, looking at your dreams is, what is this a picture of? So I'm just going to go through this in quick detail um, Japan, if I understood you correctly, is where they were in, they were going to Japan, like in the dream, your teacher. Um, and so Japan is uh, the east. Uh, so it's the far east and it's a foreign place. And a teacher is one that teaches on principles. And then you said that the teacher was based on like a, like a sexuality, like love teacher, correct? Intimacy, yes. Yeah. Intimacy, yes. Well. So, so um, I would say that what your dream is saying to you and calling you to, it's actually not really those people at all that are the focus of the dream. They're just supporting cast members. They're metaphors for what your higher power is saying to you, that <laughs> you're going into a place where your higher power is going to teach you a, in a foreign way about intimacy with God. Wow. Mm -hmm. You know, um, Rawl, why are you selling your house? Um, because I want to move to Chile. <laughs> I'm and sorry, why do you I, want? I should have said because because I'm moving to Chile. Because you're moving to Chile. Yeah. And yeah. why are you moving to Chile? Well, because this love, this woman that is just completely, just some, I need to be with this woman. <laughs> Caleb, I'd say you hit the nail on the head, wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a foreign step that you're taking, so you, you said it, I didn't, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know what I love? If it's okay to share, um, Raul? Like, we worked on this in a session, and um, Raul just sort of, you know, was 
started a new job with a new boss who totally supported him um, taking off <laughs> to go meet this woman and who said, well, we got to get you to Chile now. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to <laughs> so I would say your higher self is enjoying what you're doing Raul and that your number of 8 to 9 is actually if you don't sell your house not if you do and so you'll sell your house <laughs> we'll work on it. It, it, it it'll sell we only have a minute left Raul so thank you for calling in thank you very much thank, um, you. thank you thank you very much and you know Caleb you're awesome um, like that, you nailed it. <laughs> so, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> um, we have like a minute left. What would, what would you like to um, share with people? I would like to leave a gift for our listeners. Uh, the, uh, the Kadosh Ruah Yah that I was speaking about, uh, just uh, releasing the, the breath of the creator and of the spirit of life. So wherever you are right now, whether you're driving to work, you're sitting at home, or you're just uh, out and about with uh, some earphones in listening to the radio program, just like hold your hands out in front of you and uh, at the posture of what you want to receive, just receive. So right now, spirit of life, uh, creator, God, higher power, uh, Holy Spirit, just invite the Kadosh Ruah Yah, the holy breath of God and of the Creator, to impart itself into the uh, the spirit, souls, and minds of uh, and the bodies of every listener to enlighten dreams, to to build that atmosphere of dreams, to build a lifestyle of dreams, and to bring an acceleration to the revelation and plant. Um, dreams, visions, uh, and revelations that will be uh, from light and from God and for the good purpose and the destiny of every single person listening. So I bless all of you with that uh, holy breath of the Creator right now. Thank you, Caleb. That was amazing. It was an amazing show. And I just want to thank all of the listeners and those of you who called in. And thank you, Carter. We'll be back next week on Transformation Talk Radio on when at Wednesday, 8 o'clock a.m. Pacific time. Bye for now. Thanks, Colette. You've been listening to The Truth Is Funny with Colette Stephan. Tune in to The Truth Is Funny with Colette Stephan each Wednesday at 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Join Colette on the Higher Self Network as she provides energetic shifts and consistent results in every area of life, inspiring listeners to shine their brilliance and ensure success while roaring with laughter as they recognize the humor of the giant cosmos joke. The truth is funny. Visit the truth is funny.com for more information. That's the truth is funny.com.